So now, uh, as we proceed further, now we will deal with attention pneumothorax. So in these, uh, what happened in uh, attention pneumothorax? They, there is a lot of air in the pleural space with nowhere for the air to escape. As I have told, in open uh, pneumothorax, the air is going in also and it is coming out also but in tension pneumothorax the air will just enter into the pleural cavity but it does not have any place to go out so it will just the air will build up in a pleural cavity it will uh, and it will result in making the lung collapse the make the pressure on the mediastinum the other lung also, the great vessels, the, uh, the trachea as well. So it will make all these uh, organs to be shifted to the opposite direction. So what can be the sign and symptoms of the tension pneumothorax? Patient will be very restless. There will be a, uh, absent breath sound on one side. There will be tachypnea. There will be tachycardia. There will be uh, maybe a cyanosis as well. You will be able to appreciate. The patient is having so much of breathing difficulty that he will be using his accessory muscles. There will be uh, JVP rays. You can appreciate in all these patients. As I've said, there will be hemodynamic instability because of the great vessel compressions, because of the mediastinum shift. So there will be a hypotension as well along with that tracheal deviation so if you find all these things in a patient do suspect first thing in any trauma patient is tension pneumothorax and we have to quickly deal with these patients otherwise this can land up into a life-threatening situation of a patient so now uh, as coming first abc is their first priority airway breathing circulation maintain it with the c spine uh, stabilization you can give high flow oxygen to the patient with back mask ventilation or a high nasal flow uh, mask you can give no non rebreathing mask now uh, what you can do for these patients first of all treat the shock continue with the iv uh, take an iv access uh, draw bloods, go ahead for an AVG and uh, your uh, platelet counts and uh, blood grouping and cross matching for every trauma patients. Now, uh, what you can do, uh, you can do, you can go ahead and uh, give one liter of normal saline to the patient. Along with that, airway control is important in these patients. But in these patients, there is an again an issue. If you will intubate these patients, uh, then what happened we introduce more positive pressure into the chest and we can increase the amount of tension pneumothorax in the uh, chest as you give more pressure in the lungs the air in the pleural cavity will trap more okay as we have already been facing hemodynamic instability of the patient, then in these patients, what we prefer doing it, as soon as you indicated that the patient is having tension pneumothorax, go ahead for a needle decompression first. When the patient is on back mass ventilation, go ahead for needle decompression and then later on you can put the patient on intubation if your patient is maintaining uh, saturation. So, needle decompression and then intubation is always a better option for these patients because you uh, by intubating first, uh, you can increase the amount of air in the pleural cavity. So, how you can do needle decompression? Uh, there are two methods then, uh, which are there. Once. So, now... Uh, one second... I'm not going able to go further. Yeah. So, uh, first method is over the second intercostal space. That is between the second and the third rib. Okay. Uh, you can do locate the second or third intercostal space, mid clavicular line, like second intercostal space. Here you can see your clavicle just below that second and third rib you locate it mid clavicular line locate your clavicle and just go mid clavicular to that you are going to uh, go ahead uh, with a large bore cannula or a catheter 14 uh, gauze you can take 16 gauze you can take and you are going to pierce directly to 90 degree to this place but you have to make sure that you pierce it just enter this is a second rib. This is your third rib. 
okay over the rib on the upper border you do not have any uh, arteries any nerves but on the lower end you will be having your arteries and nerves so do not enter from the base of the uh, rib okay always go over the upper border of the rib so prefer the third rib upper border of the third rib okay not the lower border so you can save your nerves arteries vein along with the bot which are there on the bottom of the rib so after inserting a cannula you have inserted a cannula from the upper border of the lower rib you have inserted a, a cannula and you flush the uh, stillet back you will be able to appreciate bubbles in your uh, stillet then you uh, you will remove the stillet and you connect that cannula to a negative suction seal now this is a temporary attempt that we do to make patient feel better or to release some tension from the chest that has once you have confirmed it with needle decompression you can convert the same to the intercostal drainage you have to do it otherwise if you will not connect the uh, needle which you have inserted into the, into the chest and connected it to the negative seal it can direct make a port for the air to enter from that needle itself so you can convert a tension pneumothorax again to a open pneumothorax so make sure you always connect the needle to the negative seal and once you have confirmed by the needle decompression go and uh, go ahead for a icd so after putting needle decompression reassess your patient for improvement now there is an another alternative for this site of the needle decompression rather than inserting over the second intercostal space you can even enter over the fifth intercostal space at the anterior axillary line this is there in a the 10th edition of uh, atls so now they prefer over the fifth intercostal space uh, at the anterior axillary line that means you consider fourth or fifth rib okay or fifth to sixth rib you can consider upper border of the fifth rib and insert the needle the process will be same you will feel a gush of air coming out from pleural cavity okay and then you can connect it with the negative suction seal now along with the tension pneumothorax pneumo means air okay but in a trauma patient there can be an additional thing which can be a blood in the okay or in the pleural cavity now there can be mild blood also there can be moderate and a massive blood also now in any trauma patients if the patient is unstable so we are concerned regarding the massive hemothorax so the patient might be bleeding a lot inside and which is causing the instability how it can happen maybe there can be a injury to the parenchyma the intercostal arteries which are there intermammary arteries which are there can impact uh, this so we say how much bleed can be there maybe a possibility of 10 ml 20 ml 100 ml 500 ml but are each hemithorax that means one side of the chest can hold up up to 40% of the blood circulation of our body right so almost a massive hemothorax has been ident uh, has been defined as a 1500 ml of blood in the chest okay so now what we can do for these patients i have just arranged a video for you to go ahead for a chest tube insertion so it is always important to have a audible video so you can see how we do it okay okay we have seen the position of the patient as the patient has to be supine and hand has to be go up uh, in the back of the head so we can see our anatomical position very nicely the tube has to be inserted at the position of uh, just anterior to the mid axillary line as in a needle decompression we have gone anterior to anterior axillary line and the icd has to be go just anterior to the mid clap uh, mid axillary line